Heads up Hobby Maniacs, MBG here today with the long awaited look at the new Codex Necrons. I just got my hot little hands on this thing and thumbed through it. Kind of got the uh, the gist of what's going on with this whole thing and let me tell you, it's um it's pretty interesting. This is uh this is really groundbreaking stuff in here to kind of see how Games Workshop is uh kind of doing things uh with this book and uh, hopefully it's uh it's a little bit more uh kind of a, an idea of what's to come in the future to more of these hardcover books and maybe some more options and things that, that we'll see in the future. It's really exciting stuff. So uh, let's get right down to it. First of all, it's your standard hardcover codex, right? You got these this awesome Rim and Swallowin art here. And which, if you haven't already seen it, go, uh, go over to the spikybits.com uh, blog because we already got the, uh, the preview for the Harlequins up and, of course, amazing looking cover for that as well. So, uh, you know, and that's going to probably come out here in a couple weeks as well. Well, we think it's the cover, but it's whatever was in the video that Games Workshop showed off today. Uh, getting back to the stuff we're talking about today, the Necrons. Interesting book because normal codexes are about 105 to 110 pages. This one was 120 pages for still the same price that, that we normally see. And it was kind of interesting because I feel like they kind of put some stuff in here that we didn't really need. And I was kind of confused by it. And I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about here in a second. So this is the, the normal pages here. And then we get into the actual table of contents itself. And it seems like they kind of put this, uh, this faux, um, I guess, the uh, ad hoc bestiary kind of thing here. Now, all, all of the books they included, all of the 7th edition books, basically went to the full page kind of, uh, I guess they call them data sheets now, where it shows all the unit itself, all of its options, and then basically like a full color, color picture. But what's interesting is that in this book, they kind of show some art and talk about fluff in here instead of just talking about like Necrons in general and then showing the, uh, the, the painted figures gallery here, the immortal armies. They just kind of show this and, and, and they get into stuff. I feel like they put 10 extra pages in here that they didn't quite need, but hey, I'll take free content because I like, I like reading about stuff. But it's just kind of weird that the whole thing with 7th edition was they were going away from having all these uh, two different places to look up units because this is basically a fluff entry for each unit because you can see right here, Overlords, Warriors, Immortals, etc, etc, etc. And then it gets into fluff stuff about some of the dynasties and the ancient empires uh, awaken and things like that. There's also a really cool homage in here I kind of want to show you as well. So then it gets into the forces of the Necrons, which there's a lot of stuff because a lot of stuff has come out since you know, the paperback version came out. And then the appendix, which contains all the army special rules, the warlord traits, the weapons. Uh, I guess now you got the powers of the Satan, extra tactical objectives, and then, you know, the fold-out section in the back. So it comes up to 120 pages, which, like I said, was really interesting because we hadn't seen that before. Um, so just real quick, of course, it's got amazing-looking fluff sections, great full col cover, uh, col col color art, excuse me, and all sorts of nifty stuff in here talking about, you know, just the crazy Necrons, evil robots from space. They're coming to devour us all. But what I really wanted to show you was... The, uh, the new epic, epoch begins, the kind of fluff section, the timeline kind of thing. And what I really liked about it, for some of you old timers out there, you probably remember the first appearance of the Necrons as like a skirmish army in the White Dwarf back in the early 90s. And in that, they actually fought against the Sisters of Battle um, and they destroyed the world. It was kind of like how with Tyranids you got, they were discovered, or I guess their first encounter was planet Tyran. So that's how they became the Tyranids. And the same thing's in here, and apparently they kind of they kind of readdress it. Sanctuary 101, you probably remember that battle report. I couldn't even tell you what White Dwarf it was. It's so long ago. But apparently now, the Stormlord led, led the forces, which I don't remember it, because I don't remember the Stormlord being back in the 90s. But anyways, it's still cool. You know, I'd like to see some expanding on this. And so they, they put that in there, and I thought that was kind of neat, because I, I always like to check the fluff and stuff. The Silent King returns, of course, and kicking off the awakening of all the Necrons, which I guess is kind of new, and then apparently he's working behind the scenes, so I definitely kind of like that little thing, little behind the scenes there. So then you get through that, you get to the Painted Figures Gallery, which right here, boom, 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 we've seen a lot of that. Now, um, we're not going to get too into this, because this is just kind of a light overview, and i got a lot of stuff to show you in this video, all the new releases, but uh, there's the Decurion, and a lot of people are all upset, because they're like, oh, i got to arrange my forces like this, you don't have to, you can... Uh, use these formations, but these formations have to go with the Decurion, and the Decurion is broken down into core, auxiliary, and command. So if you're going to take a Decurion and you want to benefit by 
both these formation special rules and the decurion special rule, which is the command benefit right here, where you get plus one bonus to reanimation protocols and the extra living metal uh, where it's crew stun and crew shaken, which is pretty cool. Then you have to arrange your stuff into the decurion. However, you can still take a normal combined arms detachment, you know, just a normal one HQ and two troops, or an allied detachment, et cetera, et cetera. You can also combo it with the Mephret Dynasty as well from the Shield of Ball Exterminatus. You can do that too. And this is just completely, you know, you can pull stuff from this book because it's Codex Necron, or it's, uh, excuse me, it's Necron Faction. So as long as this stuff has the, the special rule here that's in this book, you get it in here, which allows you to do a lot of cool things like the Conclave of the Burning One or take this war gear right here. Stuff like, you know, Relics of the War in Heaven where you, and, you know, just all sorts of crazy stuff. And the big, as long as you arrange them in the Mephret Dynasty cohort formation. So you have to, to take stuff out of here, you have to use Codex Necron Faction and arrange it like this right here. Okay, so you can technically take this and the Decurion in one combined arms detachment. So, you know, we're, we're taking college courses now, kids. Warhammer is a college course. You got to reference it everywhere. I'd say you got to have all your notations and your thesis and yada yada, right? So this is pretty interesting stuff. Like I said at the beginning, interesting stuff. Now, the question is, do you want to take the Mephret Dynasty cohort and get your... Uh, what is it? Reroll, uh, reroll rolls of one when making reanimation protocols, or do you want to get plus one to your reanimation protocols for this decurion? So this decurion, you know, is it better for a plus one or reroll one? Is it the same thing? Well, I'll let the math people figure it out. But anyways, lots of stuff going on there. Then you get into this section here, and like I said, I'm going to do another video where. Uh, I go over the whole book, the formations and things. I just want to point out a few things that I think are pretty good before we run out of time because I don't want this video to get too big that I can't upload it. So you got the whole sections here and we've seen a lot of this. This is pretty standard, the whole layout, etc, etc. Uh, some stuff that stood out to me right off the bat, you know, you got all your HQs. Uh, there is the Transcendent Satan in here. Somebody uh, just hit me up on uh, Facebook Messenger asking me, hey, what's going on? Uh, with the Transcendent Satan, like, can I still take the one out of Escalation? Can I take the one out of here? Well, the one out of here is heavy support. The one out of Escalation is the Lord of War. I don't know to tell you the truth. I mean, they're technically two different units because they're two different force works. So that's an interesting question that we're going to have to definitely do some research on. So once you get through this whole section here, like I said, Transcendent Satan is heavy support, but then you get into the Lord of Wars right here, which Immotech the Stormlord is also a Lord of War, but if you take him as part of the Decurion, you can sneak him in as part of the royal court, which is interesting, right? Because normally you can't take a Lord of War unless this is your primary detachment, but you're not taking a primary detachment because he's, dead, he's technically part of the formation and not taking him as a Lord of War. Questions, questions, questions. So, you know, I just cracked this book open, did a quick skim. I don't have these answers yet, but it's going to be very interesting to find out what the answers to them are. Then you get into the formation section in the back, which confers their own special rules, which is, again, part of the Decurion. And also, it says right in here that allows you to represent, where is it? Uh, let's see. So, in order to take these formations right here, Although units cannot normally belong to more than one detachment, units form a formation, the carrying our section, they count as part as both part of the formation and the detachment. And so that's just saying that you get the double command benefits there. Uh, unlike detachments, a force organization who where does it say it? All oh, rest as well as restriction of command, just like any other detachment. Special type of detachment can be included. So these these basically can only be fielded, right? Um, these formations here have to be included as part of the decurion and then there's like i said you have to have a core and then you have to go into your auxiliaries and things like that so it's kind of um it's kind of interesting like how this works like you can't just take these in in and of theirself because see they're here there's no point there's no points cost they're, they actually belong to this and you have to and they just give you the restriction that hey you have to have uh, each destroyer must be at least three miles. So that's the point cost. It's not really a point cost. It's just, hey, you got to take this, right? So that's, uh, that's kind of interesting in and of itself, right? So you get through all that, and you get to the back, and it shows all the special war gear and things like that. Where is it? The appendix section. And here it is, all your melee weapons, etc., etc. You got your warlord traits table, 
all your melee weapons, your new, uh, standard technical arcana, the artifacts of the Aeons, which is basically like their special war gear. Very cool stuff in here, like the Void Reaper, which is basically a War Scythe on crack. Um, which actually, the War Scythe is 20 points more, I believe, which is kind of interesting because this both comes with Mastercrafted. Um, it's Mastercrafted and Fleshbane. Uh, very interesting stuff. And then you get into the um, the profile section right there. So we're already almost over time, but I wanted to show you real quick the uh, new Necron uh, Overlord. Boom. Necron Overlord. Pretty cool. And then basically if you check it out here, it's, uh, it's a really cool multi-part kit. I mean, I didn't expect this many parts on it. Check it. Like there's, you, you got different separate backs. You've got, of course, the Void Reaper, which I just showed you, uh, just showed you the stats for. It's pretty nuts. Um, and then just lots of different parts there. So that's, uh, that's really cool as well. And then, last but not least, we've got the data cards, which are really neat. Um, and I guess these are sold out on GW side already. But what I liked about these was that they have the um, Satan powers. Because remember, there's six powers, if you haven't been reading the, the uh, spoilers. So there's six powers. And you generate them randomly. So you've got the powers of Satan card here, and then you've got your six powers. So they're kind of like psychic cards, but I think that's kind of why they did it. You know, you didn't, you didn't have, um, you don't have psychic powers. So you get this, you get this thing here, and it's kind of random. It would have been neat to maybe um, not every turn, like you get a plus one to the chart or something, but they didn't really do that. And then you get your tactical objectives cards, and of course, just like normal, you have the extra tactical objectives, the one through six, which are. Uh, faction specific. So you got the Thrall of the Silent King, Dust and Ashes, Recapture, Re Reclaim and Capture, Age of the Machine, Slaughter the Living, and Code of Combat. Because, you know, Necrons are all super, uh, super honorific in battle and things like that. So, <laughs> pretty, pretty interesting stuff. I don't, I don't know where they get it from sometimes. So, there's a look at those cards. So I just kind of wanted to show you all the releases for this week because we're only getting one one, re, uh, one week of Necrons apparently, and uh, you know it's a little disappointing, but you know they already have so many models. I mean, you saw that page in there. There's there's so many different units. They really didn't need to make that much more, I guess in my in my opinion. But it, you know, the, they eventually they're going to show their show their age. So we'll, I'm sure we'll see some new stuff in the next few years. But uh, regardless, uh, that's pretty much it for this one, guys. Thanks for hanging in there with me. Definitely. Be on the lookout for a complete codex, uh, I guess, uh, complete in-depth, thorough over, overview review of, of the book because there's so much good stuff in there. And I'm really, really super positive about this book. I think it's, uh, I think it's good. I think we're going to see a lot, of stuff, a lot of stuff coming here forward. And uh, I think they fixed a lot of things that were a little abusive. And it definitely gives me hope for the Eldar book. If we can get that thing fixed... Then I think uh, I think a seventh edition will definitely be uh, humming along, super efficient. So uh, so that would be that would be cool to see. So thanks for hanging in there with me, guys. Uh, make sure you stay in the trenches. Subscribe to this uh, YouTube channel. Check out the blog, SpikyBitsBlog.com, and listen to our podcast, ForgeNarrative.com.